Good evening. Crandall and I were talking the other day, and it became clear to us for as long as we have lived in Charlotte, our city has striven to be considered a world-class city. Today, we are that city. And for that recognition, we owe an enormous debt of gratitude to the leader we honor tonight. For it is a fact, there is no world-class city that also does not have a world-class university. And that world-class university exists right here in Charlotte today, thanks to the dedicated leadership of Chancellor Phil Dubois and the foresight of his predecessors, the remarkable Jim Woodward, Dean Corbett, E.K. Fretwell, and of course, our beloved Bonnie Cohn. UNC Charlotte is today truly a world-class university. I had the high honor, the joy, and yes, even the challenge of working with Phil Dubois during the first five years of his chancellorship. And I assure you, no other university anywhere ever had a greater champion than Phil Dubois. Every day, and I do mean every single day, of my five years as president of UNC, Phil Dubois pushed me, prodded me, provoked me, beat on me, beat on me to wake up and grasp the importance to North Carolina of having a world-class urban research university right here in Charlotte. This great chancellor truly gave me no quarter in demanding that UNC Charlotte get the resources and the respect it needed, deserved, and had darn well earned. Chancellor Dubois was determined to make sure that UNC Charlotte took a back seat to no other public institution of higher learning in this state, including my own alma mater, right down the road in Chapel Hill. It was truly because of Phil's leadership, his drive, his strong will, his dogged determination, his perseverance, and that brilliant leadership of his that folks like me, Tom Ross, our Board of Governors, and the political leaders in Raleigh finally got it and came to fully appreciate the iron class case Chancellor Dubois made every single day for support of a world-class university he was building and has now built right here in Charlotte. What a debt of gratitude we, the citizens of Charlotte, owe to this strong leader. Today, UNC Charlotte is that thriving urban research university. He and his predecessors envisioned it could be and it would be if they just pushed and pushed and pushed numbskulls like me just a little bit harder every single day. Today, UNC Charlotte has an incredibly talented student body of over 28,000 students. This student body and faculty and staff from around the world are a catalyst for global thinking, driving this city of ours forward in ways some of us never even dreamed possible. Today, UNC Charlotte is nobody's stepchild. It is the fastest growing university in this state and has accounted for more than 60% of the growth of the entire UNC system over the past seven years. Today, its graduates populate every important business and not-for-profit organization in this region. To think, to think we almost lost this leader truly takes my breath away. In the 1990s, Phil served as UNC Charlotte's provost under the great Jim Woodward. 
But in 1997, Phil and Lisa and their family were lured away to serve for eight years as president of the University of Wyoming. At Wyoming, they enjoyed a very successful and productive tenure. But it wasn't long before Smokey Bissell, a prior recipient of this World Citizens Award, headed the search committee at UNC Charlotte that brought the Dubois family back home, home to Charlotte. Among the many friendships Phil and Lisa formed in Wyoming was one with that old curmudgeon, a true American treasure, my pal and cohort, Senator Alan Simpson. When we told Al about Phil being honored tonight, he wanted to be a part of a program by sending this video greeting. I can't promise you this video isn't R-rated knowing Al. <laughs> but let's take a moment and listen to Senator Alan Simpson. When Phil and Lisa came to Wyoming, let me tell you, we were struggling in, in ways. And then, of course, when he came and his name was Dubois, and we have a town in Wyoming called Dubois, so one guy was wandering through that area of Wyoming, Dubois, Dubois, and he went into this place and he sat down, he was troubled. He said to this woman, now, I, I don't, how do, you, how do you pronounce the name of this place and say it very slowly? And she said, Burger King. When they were in Wyoming, they brought class and glamor but more than that, leadership, tremendous leadership. And Lisa was a, a wonderful hostess. It, Wyoming University was the hostess with the mostess and the entertainment capital. Kings, potentates, princes, and all beautifully done by Lisa and Phil in their home, in their own home. And then what he did with the university in strategic planning uh, and, and all the tactical things. And in that period of time, he did so much that even one board member, how's this for an accolade, said, you know, the thing about Dubois that concerns me, he gets his way too much. Well, that was a bonehead that, that expressed that, but let me tell you, he does get his way because he has charm and he's, he's precise and he knows exactly where he's headed. He, he, he'd tell you to go to hell in the way you look forward to the trip. Uh, he gets his way, but he's a man of great integrity, and Lisa is just one of the finest. And the pleasure for me and for Anne is that we came to your beautiful campus, and that's where we met Erskine and Crandall. That's given me great joy. One of the greatest guys I've ever worked with is Erskine. And so you have on that podium tonight Phil, and Erskine, two very, very special uh, friends of mine. And remember that all three of us wouldn't be anywhere if it weren't for Crandall and Lisa and Ann. So have a big one. I know you're gonna live it up and sleep in the streets, and you should. And just know that you're honoring a tremendous man. God bless you. Have a great night. That is a true American treasure. <laughs> Phil Dubois. Phil Dubois is truly a world-class leader in this thriving place that is today a world-class city. His leadership and success have demonstrated how important UNC Charlotte is and will continue to be in Charlotte's recognition as a place people throughout the world want to live, work, and raise their family. It has been my own privilege to work with university leaders from around the globe, and I can unequivocally state that Phil Dubois is without question the finest administrator I have ever known. His instinctive commitment to diversity, to fostering a broad community of backgrounds and cultures, is precisely what we need in our leaders 
particularly today.